Hi, I'm Chris Howard, and welcome to Top of Mind. Now, you might have noticed that everybody is talking about AI agents or agentic AI. It's all over the place, and it's very noisy, and it's one of these things where hype kind of collects everything up with it, and everything becomes an AI agent, and, and so on. I thought it might be useful for me to take a few minutes to give you some perspective from Gartner in terms of what, how we describe AI agents, what they do, and some of the emerging patterns that are coming with them. Now, agent is a very specific word, and it's chosen because it means what it means. AI agents have agency. They have the ability to make autonomous decisions. Now, within guardrails, certainly, but the whole power of them is they're able to actually sense an environment, figure out a solution to a problem, and actually figure out the optimized way to solve for a problem or to change the physical environment or some way or the digital environment as well. So let's think about a little bit about what's happening there. First of all, there's a sensing mechanism. Now it could be as simple as sensing text that's being entered or natural language interactions with the user. It is understanding that context and then guiding them through a conversation as an agent. So responding in real time based on what the other user is saying and adjusting themselves. So an example of this that I've seen recently, there's this really beautiful application uh, built in conjunction with the University of Toronto and CAMH, which is the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto, which is an application to help people stop smoking. And it's interesting, if you look at what's happening behind the scenes there, there's a person interacting with an agent that is specifically trained to help people stop smoking. And so imagine this, person comes in and says, well, during the pandemic, I started smoking again and I feel kind of bad about it. The wrong thing to do would for the agent to say, well, that's really bad because smoking's bad for you and you should stop. <laughs> and in some cases with natural language programs, that might've happened in the past where it sort of just kind of cuts to the solution. Whereas if it was a true therapeutic situation, the therapist would be guiding the person through to get more information, make them feel comfortable and so on. And that's in fact what this agent that the team has built does. So you can see its chain of thought. You can see its chain of thought and is saying, okay, they're starting to open up a little bit. So offer encouragement and maybe ask some questions. And you can see this sort of the trust developing between the agent and the person. The agent is doing this in real time based on its training. So that's something really fundamental. Agents are trained to act in certain environments. Okay. The other thing about agents is that they can optimize solutions for the problems that they're given. So that's another form of agency. So give it a hard problem and it may start to then assemble pieces of a workflow to then come up with an optimized solution for that particular problem. Now, it's not doing it with magic, which is part of what's happening under the covers. It's relying on things that have been provided to it, like APIs, for example, or a knowledge graph or large action models to decide what's available to actually then compose together together for that optimized solution. Some of the other uses of agents are interacting more with the physical environment. So imagine agentic AI being part of a robotic system. So the robot, physical manifestation of this sort of digital mind, is interacting with the environment to do things. Now, traditionally, you could program them within certain guidelines to do certain things and different actions, but you know, it was really kind of limited to that set of pre-programmed uh, uh, information. What agents will do when combined with robotics is actually uh, is, is maneuver within an environment that it didn't expect, that is completely new. And you extend that perhaps to its ability to sense things like gas leaks, perhaps, who sort of just at the chemical level that a human might miss, or other things in, you know, in terms of the image environment uh, and interacting with systems and data. So it has those capabilities to bring in sensing from the environment and then take actions as a result. So you could imagine all kinds of uses for this kind of technology. The earliest examples of AI agents will have a very obvious user interface, kind of like this, the, the stop smoking application I was just talking about. I'm interacting with an application, or you can interact with a robot, or maybe it's, you know, it is a, a video of an avatar, something like that. And those will certainly be really important use cases. But some of the more interesting things perhaps will have no interface at all. They're actually happening deep in an infrastructure somewhere and being coordinated perhaps by an agent somewhere at a higher level. So think, for example, deep in infrastructure and operations and networks that are deep down in, into the IT stack. 
you could imagine swarms of agents working for doing things like mean time to failure, failure analysis or self-healing, which are techniques that have been around for a long time, but actually could be scaled through agent technology, giving them the autonomy to make decisions in the environment in that way. So that's interesting too, and sort of on the cutting edge, but again, it, it is built on patterns that, that have existed before. Another type of pattern that we're seeing that I don't have a lot of time to go into here, but something that's worth paying attention to is what are called multi-agent systems. A couple of examples of these would be uh, one system, one AI system that's generating some kind of an output, and another AI system that's trained maybe in a specific regulation, say maybe it's personal health information. So you want to make sure that this system isn't violating that policy and exposing something that it shouldn't. So you have these two agents working together, the second agent interrogating the output of the first to ensure that it complies with policy. Now, I can imagine a time when actually any government regulation could be learned by an agent then applied at design time or applied at runtime to, to manage compliance in very complex environments. The beauty of that is that regulations and policy are changing all the time. So it would be an instance of retraining that agent so that it is constantly up to date and working together with other agents. Other patterns exist like agents that are kind of working in parallel to optimize the solution to a problem. And then at the end of that optimization, there's another agent that chooses the best option, kind of like a voting mechanism, right? So they're racing towards a solution, you get a voting mechanism at the end that chooses the optimal solution for that environment. So agentic AI, very specific meaning. It has autonomy to make decisions. Uh, but the other thing about it is that it learns. So agentic AI learns as it interacts with the world. And maybe in a very stateful way over multiple interactions over large periods of time. So it's actually optimizing itself and getting better and better at choosing the optimized path to solution. So it's learning. What's happening in the frontier model side kind of is, is related to this. So if you look at 01 or 03 from OpenAI, what's happening in those models is that they're starting to build in chain of thought reasoning as part of the training. So what's happened here is that essentially we've run out of data to train these models on, believe it or not. So it's completely scraped the internet and for the most part have gathered everything that you know, could be learned just from the open internet and other sources. And so what we're seeing now is a shift towards understanding why things are related to one another in, in this kind of a graph environment. What's the logic that holds them together? And then that becomes the thing that is exposed. So the chain of thought, which is part of you know, the reasoning towards a solution is actually being built into the models. Now this is really new and we're, we're studying this really carefully. Uh, and I think it's the combination of chain of thought within the models combined with things like a knowledge graph or a large action model is actually going to be the combination that we start to see being used to solve the hardest problems that we have. Now, I mentioned large action model. The way that I think about that, so if a large language model predicts the combinations of words that make sense, a large action model predicts the combinations of actions that make sense in combination. So you could see how that would be useful for an agent that was trying to act on what it sensed in the real world. It's a lot of stuff. I should also say what agents are not. Um, agents are not just chatbots. You know, a chatbot you could consider, I suppose, to be a form of agent, but it doesn't have some of these attributes I'm talking about. Like it doesn't have the ability to react in an ad hoc way in real time. It's programmed to do sophisticated things and it appears to be reacting to you, but it's not doing what actual agents do. So you're gonna hear a lot out in the market environment and from vendors and so on, that they have agentic AI. Use some of these things I'm talking about to really test to make sure that it is. Uh, because it can be very powerful and it's certainly moving very quickly. A couple of the other things that we're doing at Gartner, my colleague Daryl Plummer will be familiar to some of you, is, is looking at things like guardian agents. So these are agents that work in the environment to keep bad things from happening, kind of like what I was talking about. And certainly disruptive technologies there. We've had a couple of webinars that go into more detail than what I'm giving you here about agentic AI and how it works. And so I would encourage you to look at those. But word to the wise, be careful. Uh, there's a lot of hype around agentic AI. It means some very specific things. Uh, and will be powerful as you learn to use it. Well, thanks for tuning in. I'm Chris Howard. This has been Top of Mind, and we'll see you next time.